Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw a French Bulldog in graphite. Now this is going to focus on the tips and techniques for drawing short fur, both white and black fur. But before we jump onto the fur section, let's start off with the eye. Now like with all portraits, regardless of the medium that I'm working in, I will always map out the shape of the eye first. I want to make sure that this is accurate to that reference photo. I then start blocking in the darkest part of the iris and then working from there. So I will usually put a layer of graphite down first so that I'm not fighting with the white of the paper and then I will add my darker shadows on top gradually. Now this is really really important, you don't want to use your darkest most softest pencils, something like a 6B to an 8B first. Those need to be left until your last layers. But my first biggest tip is if you have a particularly bright highlight in the eye, leave the white of the paper showing through. Don't put a full layer of graphite in over the top and then try to remove and erase that graphite with any eraser that you have. The reason being, once graphite is applied to the paper, you're never going to be able to then get it as white as the paper was originally. So if you do have anything that's particularly bright, like the white section of her eye here, I made sure to leave that white and then gradually added my graphite to it. If I had a white highlight in the eye, there are some cases where you don't need any graphite at all. Just leave the white of the paper. So let's jump into some tips and techniques for drawing short white fur. Now here as you can see I'm actually adding in my shadow separately. I'm not putting down a solid dark layer of graphite and then trying to erase my details. That there again just like with the highlight in the eye you're never going to get that fur looking as white as it should do. So here I want to be making sure that I'm working with very subtle layers. One of the most important things when working on any fur is the fur direction and this again is something that I talk about in many of my tutorials here on YouTube. The fur direction is never random, it is determined by the underlying bone and muscular structure. So for instance take this area here on the top of her head. Notice how my pencil strokes are starting to curve up towards the ear. This is going to help make it look like the ear is then joined onto the top of her head which is of course the way that it should be. If the fur direction here is wrong we will then make the head look either too broad and too wide or too tall and narrow. So this fur direction here is crucial. Now you can also see that I am layering up this dark fur gradually just like what I've said with the eye. Now I do have a video here of me drawing a black Labrador in graphite and if that's of interest I'll link that in the description below. I show you there how I like to use graphite powder for my first layer and build up my details from there and with each additional layer you build up that depth gradually. So if that is of interest I'll make sure I link that in the description below. So before we start talking about shading and some blending techniques, if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far are useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up. And if you do want to get notified of future content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. So onto shading, you can see here for the base layers that I am using a blending stump. Now this is one of my main preferences for getting that first layer of graphite on the paper. Another tool that I find works well for applying that first layer of graphite is a eye makeup sponge or you could use a soft tool. Now both of those do work really well but your eye makeup applicators are far cheaper. And as you can see when I've worked on the nose, that very first layer I still used that blending stump. This is a really nice way of applying that first layer because you avoid any harsh edges. When I'm working on any kind of fur texture, any element like the nose or the eye, I really don't want there to have any start and stop points with those harsh lines. So a blending stump with a nice amount of graphite powder on is a really nice technique for using for that base layer. As you can see here, I'm using the same layering process that I did for the eye. I'm working with my gradual subtle layers and I'm gradually darkening up the values on that nose. I then used the kneaded putty eraser to subtract and remove some of that graphite exactly as I did with the iris and that's there just created that very soft and subtle highlights. Now again just like with the highlight in the eye some noses depending on the light source and how wet they look you might have a very white bright highlight on the top of that nose or where the nostrils curve on the lower edge. If you do have a particularly bright highlight then I would always recommend to leave the white of the paper showing. Now something that I think is really important is don't force detail where it isn't seen in that reference photo. 
if you're working from a good quality photo and you can see all of that fur direction, but the fur direction detail in one area looks a little bit lacking, it's usually because that fur is either very short, so you can't see it in the same way as on the rest of the face, or that fur is a little bit softer. On this bulldog's muzzle around the nose, the fur did just that. It was very short, but also it did look like it wasn't shifting in the same fur direction. Because the French Bulldog, they're known as being brachycephalic, so that means that they don't have a long snout. They have more of that um, squished up face. So because of that, the fur direction between the eyes and right on the top of the nose will change at a far quicker angle than something like a Labrador. So in these cases where the fur doesn't look as detailed, but again, I must stress that if it's, you've got a good quality photo and you can't see detail in that area, just draw what you see. Don't force detail where there isn't any there. However, if you're working from a poor quality photo, that's going to be a lot harder to judge. So in those cases, you will have to add more detail in your portrait from what you can see in your reference photo. So for the black fur around the eye here, notice again, just like with the eyes and the nose, that I'm building up my values gradually. I am not trying to jump into my darkest pencils first. Now one of the main reasons is because you won't have as much depth built up with that fur. And of course we want all of these subtle highlights, these mid-tone values to show through, which will not happen if we jump to our darkest pencils first. The other reason why we don't want to be jumping to our darkest pencils first when drawing this dark fur is because we will end up with something called graphite shine. Now this is when you're using those soft pencils, so your higher rated B pencils like a 6, 7 and 8B, and then you do end up creating that slick surface. That is then going to create that graphite shine. Now every portrait done in graphite is going to have a degree of shine to it, that's just the nature of the medium. You can see it here sometimes when my hand is going in and out of the view that the midline between the white marking and the black marking looks like I've got a shift in my values. That's just the reflections from my hand onto that graphite. Now you're, as I said, you're going to have that to a degree, but it, you can limit it by being aware of that layering process. So you'll notice that in the last few weeks I have been uploading a lot more graphite tutorials with voiceover. That's because I am in the process of adding a graphite tier to my Patreon channel. Now I already offer slower in-depth tutorials there in pastels and acrylic so if they're of interest I will link my Patreon in the description below. But because I've had a lot of requests to add a graphite tier to feature these slower tutorials in this medium, I am building up a library of content so that when my graphite tier goes live there is already a few tutorials there that members can get started with. Then after that I'm going to be uploading content as regularly as I can and all of the tutorials will be uploaded with a voiceover while I'm drawing. So it is going to be very step by step and it is as close to a one to one drawing tutorial as I can give because all of those processes are explained at that time. Why I do that pencil stroke, why is that layer so important, why am I using that specific pencil. All of these I can explain at the time. Now at the moment that graphite tier is not live, as I say I'm still working on the content there in those tutorials. But what I will do is when that graphite tier is launched I'm going to put a comment in all of my graphite tutorials here on YouTube in the comment section below and I'm going to pin that to the top so that you know exactly when this graphite tier has gone live. Alternatively of course you can always comment on any of my graphite videos asking that question and I do always try and get back to every single comment that I have here. You are always welcome as well to contact me on any of my social medias and I do always make sure that I get back to everybody. So if you've got any art related questions, anything to do with Patreon, feel free to put them in the comments below. So when it comes on to the ears of any dog, this is going to vary depending on the breed. Now French Bulldogs, as you know, they have those big upright ears. It's all about how we shade the inside section of that ear in order to create that right shape. You can see here that I am using an eye makeup applicator, I am using my graphite powder and I'm gradually darkening up my layers. This for me is the best way of creating this very soft skin effect with the inside of the ear whilst building up my values gradually. The one thing that you'll find though when using graphite powder is you're only able to go a certain degree of darkness. So you're going to have to overlap with your pencils at some point and that's exactly what I'm doing here. 
So I've already mentioned about shading, but the inside of this shape of ear is really important. Notice how the inner section is a little bit lighter than the two edges. And with each additional layer that I'm now adding, I'm only darkening up those edges of the ears. I'm not going in the center of the ear at all. And now you can see here where I have finished that, there aren't many details in this ear, but it looks realistic because my contrasts are right. My shadows are really dark and those highlights, even though they're subtle, they're bright enough. It's always about finding that balance. And one thing that I recommend is zoom out of your reference photo, look at your artwork and think what bit is brightest on my portrait. Now usually that's going to be the highlight in the eye, but for this French Bulldog, the white marking on her face was one of the brightest parts. So what I had to do is always look at the reference photo as a whole, step back from my drawing and think, right, okay then, that means I need to make the highlights in the ears darker. They shouldn't be as bright as the white fur on the face because something that can happen, take this ear that I'm currently working on, we only focus on that one section at that time. It's very easy for our brain to think, right, okay, well the middle part of the ear is a highlight. We then have a tendency to make it far too bright. One of the common things that can happen is we are too afraid to go too dark in case we can't lighten it back up. The problem with that is the portrait will look flatter because you don't have as much contrast because your shadows or your mid-tones aren't dark enough. So the biggest tip when drawing any kind of element, particularly fur, is do make sure that you've got your shadows and your mid-tones as dark as they need to be in order to build up that realism in that fur. This is far more apparent when working with graphite because it is a black and white medium. When you're working with a colour based medium, the colour can sometimes be a little bit more of a distraction from the contrast. But when your viewer is looking at a graphite portrait, it's going to be very obvious whether or not that dark fur is too light. You don't want a black dog to look like a grey dog. So whenever you've got any black markings, regardless if it's a black Labrador or a breed like this where it's got patches of black, I always want to make sure that the viewer looking at this portrait knows that that is a black and white dog. So that is my main aim with any portrait like this. So I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here have been useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up because it does tell YouTube that it's of interest and they'll then share it with more people. If you would like to get notified of future content, as I've already mentioned, hit the subscribe and the bell button. I'm going to be uploading another video at the end of the week, but if you've got any questions and you are interested in a graphite tier on Patreon, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching.